right, we're going to jump right in. I'm going to show you how I prepared the uh, model here for some color, and we're going to go with the basic slap chop technique. So I'm starting off using a primed model black, and now we're going to go over it with four different colors working up in our color. And our first uh, one I have here, it's a dark gray. I use inexpensive craft paints from like Hobby Lobby, Michaels, whatever you have. And uh, so it's like folk art brand. It's called Peppercorn. I just went and uh, found three shades of gray uh, that I, I think kind of are in the same warmth area. And uh, that's what I use. So we're going to go over the whole thing. Uh, use a couple of different brushes. This one here is just an inexpensive, like $2 makeup brush. And uh, to get, it's a little softer so I can get in and smaller. I can get in like under the arms or between the legs, stuff like that. But this first coat is going to cover almost the entire model except for the deepest recesses. And as you see, we move to a lighter um, color of gray, shade of gray. Uh, this one classic French gray. Um, again, the brand, it doesn't matter. Um, just find three that kind of progress, uh, getting lighter and lighter. Eventually, we'll, the last color we use will be a, a white, which you'll see. So we're just going over this model again. And sometimes you're, you may question, well, why don't I just start with this color? Well, it's a, a building up of the colors that we want, making having the uh, the various shades. Um, some of it will totally be covered and not be seen, but uh, this is a quick way. This only takes a, a, a few minutes, really, uh, to do. So now we've moved up. This is the last gray that we're going to use. This is a pale gray. Um, and when you're putting this on, it just looks like you're putting, you know, it's like white every time. But you go to a lighter color, and this is the last one. This is a heavy body acrylic uh, titanium white. Just kind of getting the highest spots, not putting as much pressure on uh, the model uh, to, to, you know, get into the recesses. That's not what we want to do with this. We're just trying to get the, the top parts uh, and the, the highlights. So here's the model. We've gone from black to these various shades of gray and then white on top. Um, this just looks good right here. So the first color we're going to be putting on the model is the uh, the one that is seen the most. It's I use uh, Citadel Contrast Frost Heart. Uh, it's one of the second wave colors they have. You know, any transparent paint is fine. That's what we want. Uh, we want the undercoating, those uh, those grays and white and black, to show through. We're also not using contrast paint in the normal way of just letting it. Putting it on and reset, you know, letting it flow into the recess, recesses of the model. I mean, it is doing that, uh, but we're just trying to put this over the shadows and the highlights we already have. So it's more, I, I think of like my paintbrush as a shovel and I'm just moving the paint like we use a shovel to move a pile of dirt. Well, I'm moving a pile of paint, spreading it out over the model. Um, just you know and you can use any speed paint or transparent inks I'm just familiar with how uh, the Citadel contrast paints work that's what you know I, I don't need two brands of you know all their blues um, and I can buy these locally it makes it easier so uh, if you just you know you could always pull up a picture of the model on the internet but you'll see like right here where I'm stopping on the arms that's because uh, we're going to have a transition from this uh, blue to the ivory or whites of like the, you know, where his stomach and, and such are. So just being careful going over the face, which uh, again, we're going to, you know, uh, use an ivory. We're going to cover this up, but I still want to have this blue now as a undercoat. So. Uh, you don't need to use a smaller brush just make sure you're careful and use a brush that has a, a you know decent point tip on it uh, I can maneuver this paint around just fine with this, uh, I don't know, this is number four number six 
brush. The thing with uh, using a transparent paint over this, you know, grayscale is c making corrections. And I, I want to do a video on like how to do that if you get paint in the wrong area. So here we go. This is all the blue done. So now we're just moving on and uh, getting the rest. So the next color is Gore Grunt of Fur. It's a red brown kind of color. Uh, so this is just going over the uh, like this loin cloth uh, and the straps that he has. Uh, this guy, and I've painted about nine of these Trogoths for my own army. Um, he doesn't have nearly as many straps. He doesn't have a, uh, um, as much stuff going on, but he does have this loin cloth and like a little belt kind of part that connects it and this strap uh, for his necklace around there and he, you know you can use whatever colors you like for you know leathers and straps uh, you know uh, there, there's different things I did want to get something that had a little red that would um, kind of complement the blue it's your personal taste it's art um, so uh, or what you have and then the next one just a small detail I'm using Saigor brown and I'm also this is thinned out I just use water to thin it out because it's so uh, uh, intense but this is uh, just for his, his fingernails and his uh, toenails as well and then there's this little detail he has like a little bird's nest or something up on his head so I use this Nasdreg yellow for ropes um, I've used it excuse me I've used that for leathers as well but I'm using it for this rope and then good old wild wood for this uh, goat or ram that he has slung over his shoulder uh, just uh, and this one again I have thinned down with a little bit of water in my in the brush because again it's a very intense uh, color I've used this wild wood for uh, wood and fences like on terrain and it will just it takes a lot of the detail um, out because it's so rich uh, you can also use the contrast medium um, I, I don't necessarily love that in all cases I think it takes the intensity out so the next detail we're going to cover is uh, the bones that he has like hanging on his uh, on his belt uh, he's got one on uh, his I think that or I don't know if he has one on his necklace or not uh, but all these little bones hanging there as well as his teeth we're gonna get that skeleton horde is not particularly intense in color so I do usually go over it a couple of times especially like on the teeth that are really bright in that undercoat um, so I just look at that and just let it dry completely and then go back all right this next step is the most skill intensive if you want to say that we're going to make a glaze and I'm using pro acryl ivory so you see how I'm just watering that down and then I check it here on my hand you can have something else but I want to make sure it's transparent and I'm just going to go over uh, all this uh, I don't know the underbelly or stomach you know the, these areas you know that we haven't painted yet um, so I still I want it to be enough of a glaze that I can see the undercoating like this area right here on the stomach I still want to see part of that that little uh, the grays and then you know or even blacks there they're just going to be I, I use this term knocked down so they're not going to be as dark uh, I also uh, just a little technique I move my brush towards the center uh, of like his stomach because that's where I want the most paint to be deposited when you lift up your brush it, it that's kind of where it is so that's how you can kind of train force the paint you know into these areas so I try it as much as possible it's a skill that's very um, uh, useful I also try to use the side of my brush which is very difficult for me to break that habit I kind of draw my paint on you know more like a pencil or uh, such so I'm just covering up these areas and you can even right here say how I'm going into the blue uh, of the the scales uh, that's you want that because we're going to put a transition color or mix in there to uh, to make that transition a little more gradual instead of just glazing up like you would uh, uh, 
uh, traditionally paint, you know, to create a, uh, a fade or a blend or such. So just going over this, uh, the, the rest of the model. Also something when you're making a, a glaze out of an acrylic paint, I would recommend, uh, it's helpful for me, to do it in small batches. Uh, I use a wet palette, you see that. Um, just a, a great way to keep the paint moist, uh, not drying out but uh, just working in small areas. And yes, I'm going over the face again. If you look at the, the uh, box art, his face is pretty light. So I still want those blue undertones, but uh, I kind of want a, a reset on the color. So uh, I'm hitting uh, definitely the high areas like his lip, his eyebrow, his nose and such, as well as his chin because uh, the white actually comes all the way up from his uh, chest uh, up his neck into his face so um, I kind of want to hit these areas and then I kind of also I don't know I, I kind of like plan out what I want uh, where I want the glaze to be even lighter and I kind of do those areas at the end so like more of the pigment or the paint has left my brush and I've kind of like down to the, the end of that uh, brush full of paint and it's a little more less intense so uh, sometimes I'll, I'll do the the brighter highlights and then go to the areas I, I want to be less intense uh, and do that so while I have this ivory on the brush I'm just going to go ahead and, and do a quick highlight uh, of the the bone the teeth and stuff it's like ah, you know what it's going to take I don't know, a minute or something. I already got the paint on the brush. It's, uh, you know, incredible bang for your buck, you know. Uh, small detail, just do that. I think he has some. Um, again, going over this transition area from the, uh, the intense blue, uh, from those rock scales uh, to the blue. So now uh, I've moved on to the next uh, color, and this is... I guess a mix of this Pilar Glacier contrast paint, which is very thin, very, uh, uh, it's not very intense. So I put just, I have a one to three ratio. It's a very small amount of that Frost Heart uh, uh, blue, which is very intense. So it's just like the smallest amount. So practice with that. But I want to get, this is that transition between that intense blue to what we're gonna do, uh, just the glacier, the Pilar Glacier, would, you know, so I want something in between there. So you see how I'm just letting my brush marks go up. And then uh, now I just have the Pilar Glacier. You see how um, light of a color that is. So I'm just feathering this uh, from the dark areas, like it'd be like his, uh, where this loincloth is. So I'm just kind of getting a little on there and just feather, just pulling it up. Here, this is just the Pilar Glacier, this light blue, and making another transition from that mix of colors to uh, just this light blue, and then uh, just it'll go into the white. So uh, this is just a, a quick and easy transition. Uh, the same thing you do with regular acrylic paint, uh, mixing them together. So now we're going over uh, the face again, and this is just that Pilar Glacier to uh, uh, bring out a little bit of that color. I'm just hitting, also I'm just hitting the edge of his ear. We're gonna do something for his, I guess, inner ear, the inside of his ear flap uh, that he has there uh, to kind of to put a little more color in there. Um, trying to make those transitions here uh, come out. So if you have any questions as we're going to finish this uh, part up, any questions, leave them in the comments. Uh, for the inside ear part, I'm using this Volopus Pink, and I thin this out because this, again, is a very intense pink, or whatever color you're using. Test it out before you put it on there. This is it right there, just that small, you can see a little better here. And then we move on just to the other details. Uh, these models have all sorts of things hanging off of them, so just using uh, some bright gold for this uh, uh, poor Stormcast helmet uh, that he has hanging from there. 
uh, just these little odds and ends. Um, you know, I'm not spending a lot of time on it, but just uh, getting them covered. And then for the base, which I put just some uh, uh, texture uh, mud paint on there, I do a two color dry brush. So uh, it's black uh, from the prime, and then I put this dark gray on, and then a light gray. Something real simple. Uh, this is just to show the completion of the model and, you know, give it a little character. Uh, so just really quick process here. Uh, and then the most satisfying part of hobby painting is painting that black rim uh, around the model. So whatever color all my uh, uh, Gloom Spike gets army has this uh, blue base. I mean, just because I like the color blue, I guess. So obviously this is just whatever you want. And then nice and easy, put a couple of, uh, a few grass tufts on there. And this is just to give us something a little, uh, to show, to kind of like bring a little unity and finished up our model here. Quick and easy, a low skill type thing. Um, kind of a little group of Trogoffs here. Well, I hope this video was uh, um, helpful for you. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments. I'll sure get back with you. If you found this video helpful, uh, I'd appreciate it if you would like and subscribe to the channel. And I hope I can uh, provide more content uh, that you'll find helpful in the future. Thank you.